Welcome to Jaren.net and today I'm going to show you how to dismantle the O2 joggler. Uh, first thing is to open it up, you have to peel off this back sticker. It can be a bit of a pain to get it started. I just use a very fine or uh, small flathead screwdriver and started picking at it. I end up getting it from just going on the side here. But once you get it started, it's fairly easy to just peel it all the way off. And then you have access to the only four screws you need to remove in order to take it out, take it apart. So of course we'll start off by removing these four. Now from here, uh, you basically just need to pry off the screen, plus a credit card and just slowly work your way from the corner here, for example. See it's a little bit open right there? Okay, the rest of the card. You can see now, it's starting to open up there a little bit. Now we do the same on the other side here. Good. And now, you've got most of it open right there. See that? There's four more clips on the top that I just go all the way to the top. Do the same thing with your credit card. And there you can see the top has popped off a bit there now too. So then, open it up. I'll just pull it off because it's got the wires connected there, as you can see. So what we want to do now. So start by just peeling off this tape. Simple as peeling tape off. Go ahead and keep it on there so I don't lose it. Now here, you're going to have to kind of peel off the tape a bit. Starting in the corner here, you're going to start peeling it off. Just so the tape is only on the connector. Otherwise it's going to probably get in your way a little bit. Just grab by the bunch of the wires here and start wiggling it until it comes out. And then at this point you can remove the touch screen. We have the Wi-Fi card here connected via another US, an internal USB port right there along with the other USB port, so you got two USB ports here. And on the sides here you have one antenna for the wireless and the other one. So we'll go ahead and first uh, remove this cable here attached to the Wi-Fi card. Just kind of basically just pull it off like so. And be aware when you take the main board off there's still this one last cable on the other side of this, so once you pull it off, it, that's going to be the first thing you need to remove. Uh, we have to take off six screws now. There's one there, two, three, four, five, and six. So go ahead and work to remove those now. Go ahead and remove the screw now so you don't happen to accidentally lose it. Keep in mind though, this screw is different than the other five screws you just took out. It's a bit of a skinnier uh, thread. Okay, so at this point, the main board is loose for you to remove from the case. So what you want to do is it, it is sticky on the back. The the chips on the back are uh, stuck to a thermal pad. So if it feels like it's not coming off, don't worry, it is. It's just sticky. So slowly lift and make sure that you clear the, the this little clip right here. The USB port might get stuck on. So it's kind of make sure you stay clear of that. Keep pulling up until it's unstuck. 
And then on the left here, this little rubber thing here, you can just kind of peel it back like so. So you can get the main board out of the way like that. Then you want to go ahead and just kind of, same thing here, pry it off, just kind of push it off like that. So now you have the main board. These red cables for the speakers and the power are soldered directly to the board. So you can't remove them without either just snipping them and then uh, reconnecting them later or on soldering them. So I'm just going to leave them as is connected. Uh, you should be able to do whatever you want with them there. Uh, so here you go. It's mostly dismantled. Uh, if you want to remove the stand, there are just three more remaining screws. One here, one there, and one there. But be aware that it does in fact act as a heat sink for the uh, processor and other chips. The chips stick to the thermal pad here, and the thermal pad right here is pressed tightly up against the metal stand, which is acting as a heat sink. So yes, you can remove it. I don't recommend it. I don't know if it'll get hot enough to matter, but it is there for a reason. Uh, so proceed with removing it at your own risk. Uh, and you can here see that this is removable. This sticky thing here might be kind of holding you back when you try to remove it. So you want to peel it back a little bit, get it loose. And then just simply pull it out. And that's basically it. As you can see, however, there is a ZIF connector right there. Not sure what we could use for that. This here is in fact a little housing that holds what is called a 8-bit firmware chip. No idea what that is. You just take that and then this slides out like I showed you. This can pop up. And within there, there's a little chip. And that is that. Now, of course, to put it back together, you just do that all in reverse.